Hey everyone, welcome to this week's video. Uh, in this week's video, we're going to be taking a look at doing some sort of headshots, uh, just some sort of like something different for if you're making an FPS game, which I know quite a few people in our community are making shooter games, uh, so that hopefully adds adds to that for you. Um, there's quite a lot of things you can change with this. It's not just the headshot, it's how you can apply damage to bones and stuff like that, uh, which I think will be quite useful for quite a few of you. Um, I'm working on some other things, um, but they're not ready yet, so I just thought I'd release this. This is something I've been sat on for a while. Um, this, this is a quick demo of that, and it's using the ALS, um, the Advanced Locomotion System. And this actual file that I'm using, um, I'll put a card up above, it basically works off the uh, Crosshair um, Line Trace System that I, I've built. Um, like I said, the card was just above then that you can click on. Anyway, so what happens is if we shoot somebody in the head, um, you notice that their head will disappear, will drop to the ground like a rag doll, uh, and you get this kind of very basic particle effect. Um, and that's pretty much it. So what we'll do is we'll jump into it. There's a few more things um, that you can add on to this, like I said. Um, uh, but we'll, we'll cover them when we get to them. Okay, let's get started. Now, what I will want to say is... Um, you can just use any advanced locomotion system. Um, you just need uh, to add a line trace system to it. I'll leave a card up above if you just want to add a, a plain line trace system to it. If not, I recommend following the um, the video that I carded at the beginning um, where we add in a, a slightly better version. Anyway, so what you need to do is um, I'm going to go to my uh, player character, which we've added the line trace to. Um, and essentially what we want to do is from the line trace that actually hits the character, we're just going to be using this out hit. Um, reason is the hit result has loads of information and more importantly, the bone that it's hit. Uh, we're interested in knowing if we've hit the head in this instance, but you could do this with any part of the body. If you've hit a foot, you could take a foot off and have the character fall over and stuff like that. Um, I'm not showing you that today, but that just the uh, possible possibilities from this um, you know, a, a, a quite a lot. Anyway, if we hit the bone head, where we want to apply um, some damage to our character to say we've injured them, um, but then we also want to send some information to the um, the enemy, so then it knows I've been hit in the head and I need to remove my head and 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 blood to come out type thing. Um, so typically, when you're applying damage, you might just use the apply damage node. But this is quite limited. Um, it takes in just a damage and a, a, a type. Um, and that, that's pretty much it. Um, now, really, we need to pass in which bone that we've hit. Um, because doing this from the other side, whereas if we, when we receive a hit, um, typically you get, um, it returns none rather than the actual bone that you've hit. It's a little bit finicky, it's a bit weird. Um, but luckily what there is, there's a different apply damage node, um, which is apply point damage. And you can be a bit more specific of where you're applying damage. And the good news is, is what you can do is you can pass in the hit information. So everything that's here, you can pass in and you can do more things with that. So what we can do is we can pass that out hit information straight into there. And before we proceed, what we're going to do is we're just going to um, fill up the rest of these nodes just so then we've actually got some damage being applied, as you'd expect in a shooting game. Um, so for me, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say if my hit bone is equal to head, um, I'm going to use a select node just to do um, something different depending on what, what option there is. Um, so we're going to go for select float. Um, if it's true, it's going to be A. Um, if it's false, it's going to be B. So basically, if if we hit the head, I want it to be 100% damage. If it's not, I want it to be, I don't know, 75% damage or maybe 50%, something a bit lower. Anyway, something different. Um, alternatively, you could say if it equals, you know, the, the spine, um, underscore or one which is like the chest and uh, you could apply different damages based on which part of the body you've hit 
I'm really not particularly that bothered. I might do head and chest, so which would be the three spines. But then anything then with the arms and the legs, I'd probably have a, a universal damage. Um, and I probably wouldn't use um, this Nord. I'd probably do like um, a set, set for a damage Nord. But anyway, I, I'm not going to get into that in this video. But how you deal with damage is, is up to you. But I'm just going to do a select. Um, yeah, so I'm going to go select floor, and then basically if it's head, I'm going to have 100, and if it's not, I'm going to have 50. I'm going to return that into my base damage, and that's that. Um, the hit from direction is going to be your trace start, and then the damage actor is going to be the one that we've hit. So basically from this end, that's that's pretty much pretty much done. Um now what we're going to do is we're going to move over to the character we're going to hit uh, and just do something different with this hit information. So I'm going to compile that, save that, and I'm going to go back to my map, open up my content draw, and you can select any of these characters in the world really and just press edit on the right. Alternatively, I know that they're all just set up with this ALS anim character, uh, so we'll just open that up. So here we have it, there's not much going on, but we're going to add a little bit more. So like I said earlier, um, we've used this uh, point damage just to pass more information over. And the reason I've done that is because if you do an event hit, um, for whatever reason, um, you still have a, a hit like that. Um, so you can still break this and get information. But I couldn't seem to get this to work efficiently. Um, it doesn't really report hits how you'd expect. So that line trace doesn't actually actually register as a hit, which is weird, but if you run into another character, it would. Um, I just had it really inconsistent, so I've decided not to use it. The event any damage um, is basically the apply damage nodes opposite. And as you can see, we can't really do anything based on where we've hit. You could argue that you could set up a damage type for you've done a headshot damage type. Um, but I, I don't think that's really a good way to go about it. So we've received um, event point damage. Oh, where's it gone? There we go. Event point. So you can already see that this node gives you so many more options to, to work with, really. Um, but I'm really focused on the on the born name, really. Um, so yeah, you could you can then now do whatever you want with the damage. You know, minus this from your health. Um, take down a shield first or whatever all that's up to you um, But really in this video, we're just going to concentrate on if we get hit in the head. We're going to do this um, So if this equals head which Just prevents us from uh, Removing the head if we get hit in the arm if this is true whoop, branch if this is true, then we can continue. And if it is true, what we're going to do is we're going to take the mesh. And we're going to spawn a particle system uh, to demonstrate our blood. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to spawn a system attached. So I'm going to plug this in. So if it's true, we're going to spawn this particle system. Now I've created a blood splat system. Now what I'll do is I'll show you quickly what how I made it. I'm terrible at VFX, so I'll just go through it real quick. I went to FX, created a Niagara emitter. I created a new one, but then I selected an omnidirectional burst. And then with that, I just went into it quickly and I just changed the particle color to red. I save that and then go back to the tray. I then right clicked, create a system from it. I tell you what, I'm gonna dock this um, this tray because it bugs me that it closes every time you do something. Um, and then with the system created, I went into that and I essentially just duplicated this. So there was two of the same node. And then I changed the uh, second color to be a slightly different red. So the first one and the second one to be slightly different reds. Just to give it a bit more depth, I guess. 
and then I just changed one of the um, spawn shapes to a cone and that give more of a pop effect um, and essentially that was my that's all the blood splatter is that I've created um, so you can see I've got two now anyway I'm just gonna stick with the one that I've already made because I've tweaked it a little bit more um, and I want to attach it to the mesh and I want to attach it at the the head bone so you can just type in attach point head you don't have to change anything else then everything else will just do its do its thing uh, granted you could set up auto destroy if um, if you don't really have a lifetime on your particle um, but by default um, this system does have a life cycle um, somewhere the lifetime max is 2.5 seconds so after that it, it sort of destroys itself so you don't really have to have worry about that um, anyway once we've created that, that sort of particle system the next thing to do then is we're going to grab the mesh again and what we're going to do is we're going to hide uh, a bone by name and this is really where we're making the head disappear so again we're going to type in head for the bone and this is really just going to hide the head um, but if you do this without the particle system the blood obviously it just looks quite abrupt just the head disappears off the character which if that's what you're going for is fine but you should really do something different um, once you've got rid of the head the other thing is then really just to get the characters to drop onto the floor and act like a ragdoll um, that's quite simple too what we'll do is we'll change first the collision profile to be ragdoll uh, and then we'll tell the body to um, enable physics and it'll just drop to the floor um, so what you want to do is you want to do um, what is it is click once I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna do collision collision why can I never find this when I need it because I can't spell basically uh, do, 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 do. Here we go, right, sorry. Um, set collision profile name, and it's for the mesh, but really we're gonna delete that and we're just gonna set up some reroute nodes uh, just to make this look a bit prettier. So we'll plug that in, we'll plug that into the target. The collision profile that you want to change it to is ragdoll. Now this is case sensitive, and if you're not sure which profile that you want, you could select your mesh, go down on the right hand side to collisions, and you can see here under presets, you'll have ragdoll, and it's spelt with a capital R. So just make sure that you copy the uh, the actual name exactly, otherwise it won't work. Uh, so once you've typed in ragdoll, the only thing then really is to set all uh, bodies to simulate physics. So we'll select that, and even though you select even though you've pulled off this line, it'll still create another mesh node, but you can delete that because you've already tagged it here. We'll double click to add another reroute, we'll make that look a bit neater again. Make sure that you tick to simulate bodies, otherwise it won't, uh, and then that's connected in there. So if everything's gone to plan, what we'll do is we'll get hit in the head. Um, we will spawn some blood, hide the head, and then drop to the floor. And hopefully this all happens in, in a quiet, quick fashion where it looks neat obviously you can go um, to town with the um, with the emitter the effects and make it look really good um, but for, for obviously the length of this video um, we've shortened it so you can see no matter who you hit the head disappears and um, they drop to the ground but if you hit somebody in the legs or anything like that it's not going to do anything Obviously, it's still going to be applying damage. It's going to be applying that 50 damage that we set. Um, obviously, my characters don't have a health system or anything like that. So even though that I'm applying damage, it's not actually doing anything. Um, purely in this video, we've just added that uh, we're removing the head and getting them to ragdoll. Just some things to consider. Um, you probably will need to go a little bit further than this. Um, obviously, these characters that are holding static meshes um, it'd be worth setting that on death 
Um, when your health gets to zero, that anything that is equipped is unequipped. Because sometimes what can happen is, especially this guy holding this big box, because we're setting the body to enable physics, uh, the box naturally wants to collide with the body that it's attached to. And uh, this kind of happens. Um, so really what you should do is where you've got a held object, when you die, you can just set that to none. So you can see here we've got a static mesh and it's probably going to be like a box or a barrel. Um, you just want to set this uh, set mesh, set static mesh, set it to none, which should just be empty. And that should prevent that from happening. So what we'll do is we'll go to rifle, we'll go shoot that guy with the box. Get him a headshot. And there you go. The box disappears and it stops that from happening. So they're just things that you need to consider. And also the animation state. Um, every so often what you'll see, this might not be a problem for you. You could set your character to sort of, um, after a delay, just destroy the character so he's not in the world anymore. Um, just to prevent you from having dead bodies everywhere. Uh, but what, if you do keep him persistent, just if you give it a couple of minutes, you'll see that the toes and the fingers twitch. And that's that's because of the IK system that's built into this um, ALS system. I'm just trying to respond to the terrain, even though he's dead. It's just because we've not told it not to do that. Um, and there could be other things in this system that I've not got to yet, um, just to be aware of. Um, so yeah, I hope that was of use to you. Obviously, like I said, you can build on this sort of witch bone you've hit and set up different um, damages based on where you've hit. So if you shoot somebody in the hand, you're doing like 10 or five damage. It's very limited. Um, and depending on how far you wanna go with this, you could say if you hit somebody in the leg that they're limp or become injured. And just a, um, something else that you can add to it is if you shoot somebody, if you've noticed you've got this injured guy, if you shoot somebody in the chest, you could, you could set their animation state to injured. Um, granted, if they're holding weapons as well, I don't know how that'd look. Um, but the possibilities are endless with that one. I hope you have some fun with it. I hope this helped. If it did, please consider giving me a like. If you want to leave a comment down below, I'd appreciate that. That's pretty neat. If you want to see videos like this more regularly, um, I post every Sunday. If you hit subscribe, uh, you'll see that up. Um, every week and if you hit the notification bell you'll be reminded or, or notified when I do release a video um, if you want to chat with me you, there's some links down below for discord and there's quite a few of us in there now um, so if I can't help you somebody else might be able to help you or if you just want to come along and have a chat that's fine and yeah that's pretty much it hope this helped thank you for watching and I'll see you in another video